Psalm 119, we're going to pick up this morning in verse 41. Uh, it just really comforted me this morning as I was reading and meditating on these words. The psalmist writes, beginning in verse 41, he says, God, let your steadfast love come to me. We've talked a lot about the meaning of that word that's translated steadfast love. Some places, some instances, it's translated mercies, uh, meaning that we don't get what we deserve, but it also has a meaning that, that God looks upon our situation with compassion, and he's moved by his compassion. And so whatever your situation might be today, understand that, that God does look on your situation. And when he extends his mercy, he intervenes and he is compelled by his compassion to meet you in that place. It may not be to deliver you out of that situation, but it may be that he's given you grace and strength so that you might go through that situation because he has great purposes that he's wanting to do in you through those. I'm always reminded that God is just as concerned about um, doing through us, working in us. God's primarily concerned at, at working in us in trials and situations to conform us to the likeness of Christ. And so he's always working in that. And um, we just have to trust him in the midst of that. So the psalmist says, God, let your, let your mercy come to me. Let your steadfast love come to me. Your salvation according to your promise or your deliverance according to your promises. Uh, God ha has made promises to us. And so the psalmist is crying out, God, I, I'm according to the promises that you have made to us, to me, in your word. Oh God, move in your mercy and your steadfast love to bring deliverance for me in this situation. Um, we, we can look at deliverance in one of two ways, and the ESV, it translates it salvation here. Um, and so the application as well can be that, that God in our lives has intervened by his mercy and his grace, and it has led to our salvation, that he has saved us and rescued us. And that's a, that's a good reason to praise the Lord this morning. He has saved us. He has delivered us from eternal damnation in hell through his son, Jesus Christ. Um, I'm shocked today that, 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 that you don't hear a lot about hell anymore. Um, we just always kind of want to lean on God's grace and his mercy. And listen, grace always trumps out. But, but if there's not a hell, then it mitigates the significance of his grace. If there's not an eternal punishment, then, then it, it just, it, it kind of whitewashes the grace of God. No, God has intervened and he has saved us and rescued us from eternal damnation and hell through his son, Jesus Christ. Praise God for that this morning and pray for those who you know are not saved and their eternal destiny is separation from God for all of eternity in hell. Pray that God would, would display mercy, that God would draw them and that God would save them. And so then he says in verse 42, then I shall have God, when you extend your mercy and your deliverance to me, then I will have an answer for him who taunts me, for I trust in your word. We saw in the previous, uh, in the previous passage in the psalm that there were those who were taunting him because of his piety, because of his, um, his, his love for God, because his, of his love for the word of God. And there were those that were coming against him because of that. And so here he says, God, when you extend your mercy and deliverance to me, God, then I will have an answer out of that mercy extended, out of that steadfast love, out of your deliverance, I will have an answer to those who taught me. For I trust in your word. You see, that display to those who taunted him would be out of, God, I've trusted you in your word, and God, you have delivered according to your word. God, I trust you, and take not the word of truth utterly from my mouth, 
for my hope is in your rules. God, let your word be continually on my lips, God. Let the truth of your word be there. God, that I would hold on and trust your word. It ta um, it's challenging sometimes to trust God at his word, isn't it? I, th I think of every act that we do, really, as believers, as Christ followers in obedience to him, is a display of our trust in what his word says. It's one thing for me or you to say that we trust God, but it's another thing to act in obedience, signifying that we trust God. Jesus has called us to obedience, not only faith, but faith and obedience. Matthew 28, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey what I have commanded. James says that real faith, real faith produces a doing. It's not that our salvation comes from doing, but when we trust God, when there is a faith in God, obedience to his commands are what display that we have real faith. Uh, in every area, um, whether it's tithing, giving to God, whether it's evangelism, sharing Christ with others, whatever it might be, um, obedience is a display of our trust in him. And so here the psalmist says, God, my hope is in your rules. I will keep your law continually forever and ever, and I shall walk in a wide place, for I have sought your precepts. God, I've looked to see your principles, your truths, and your precepts in your word. I will also speak of your testimonies before kings, and I shall not be put to shame. God, regardless of who you put me in front of, I'm not going to shrink back. God, I'm going to testify to the truth of your word and your promises and your precepts. For I find delight in your commandments, which I love. See, another indication that a person has been truly born again is that they delight in the commands of God. They, they love God's commands, and the desire is to be obedient to them um, in every single area. That's a mark, and it's an indication. Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruits. Their fruit is obedience. The fruit is, is righteousness. And so he says, I delight in your commands. I will lift up my hands towards your commands, which I love. Um, picture that. Here in, in the Hebrew, it, it's, it, it is the action of lifting up our hands to his law, to his commands. I will lift my hands toward your commandments, which I love. It's an outward expression. I, I was thinking about this. Um, <laughs> we, we are so quick to raise our hands, pump our fists, even for a team that has no hope of going to the championship. We'll, we'll pump a fist. God would that, that in, our, in our corporate worship, in our corporate times of, of preaching and teaching the word of God, that when a truth bore witness to our spirit, we would say, yes, we're not ashamed to do it on Saturday in the living room. But somehow or another, we seem reserved. Here, here the, the psalmist is saying, listen, we're, we're to give a fist pump to the truth of the word of God. That's like an amen. That's an expression of, God, we love it. I will lift up my hands towards your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. I'll, I'll contemplate. I'll, I'll chew over and over and, and get all the nourishment and, and richness out of your statutes that I possibly can. The psalmist here, again, calls us to trust God in his precepts, to trust God in his truth, to trust God in his commandments and be obedient to them. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. <coughs> How we do His good will He abides with the still And with all who will trust and obey Trust 
trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we hear, not a sorrow. But our toll he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, sing it out. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship we will sit at his feet or will walk by. says we will do, where he sends we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I put Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him. Sing it out to him, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh. The songwriter got it right in that last phrase. It, it, it takes God's grace to trust him. You see, grace is not only related to his saving us by, by extending his undeserved merit to, it, to us, but grace is so necessary in every step of the log. Call on his grace uh, that he would give you greater trust in the truths and the promises of Jesus. I love you. I pray for you every day. Um, I pray that uh, God would just meet you where you are. If you've been encouraged by this or uplifted, please hit that share button. Uh, share it with others that are friends of yours on Facebook. Who knows what God will do uh, through the expression of his word. 
Uh, somebody just may need this today. I love you. I pray God's blessings on you. Have a great day.